Welcome back traders to a new video. Today I want to be talking about my MDB trade that I did today. Today I made $5,100 on MDB calls. Um, I was in the trade for less than five minutes, three to five minutes, and I only used around $11,000 buying power for this trade. It was only one trade, so it was a one and done. Um, it was a wonderful trade, and I'm going to be telling you how I traded it, why I traded it. And a lot of traders didn't trade this stock today because they said that the spreads weren't tight. And I fully agree with you with that, but there was a way out of it, and I will show you how. Quick thing before we get started, my new site is out. Um, has my two courses, so if you're interested in my website, you could go to the link in the description. It's mosestrades.com. I currently have two uh, courses on here. The options webinar course and the extended options course. So you can check out on my site what is included in each one, and then you can make a decision if you want to purchase it, and you could decide which one is best for you. But let's get right into the video. So before we get into the trade, there is something a lot more important than taking the trade itself, and that is finding what stocks to be on your watch list. Because if you didn't know that MDB was in play today, you wouldn't be even you wouldn't even look be looking at it. So I'm in the room, awesome calls trading, and pretty much we get these notes before the market opens. So all of these notes are before the market even opens. Um, so once the market opens, you can be ready to trade. So MDB was one of the stocks here. And AJ, who's the owner, he said that there was an earnings beat. Now, if you're interested in this room, Awesome Calls Trading, there'll be a link in the description. You could go and sign up. So here, so here AJ wrote that the stock is gapping up 53 points and do not long it unless pop it the open to 457 and then take it 10 to 14 points to the upside. And then if it went to the downside, he said exactly how to play it. So what I do is... So here what I do is on the chart itself, I draw the three, uh, the six price targets, the three price targets to the upside, and then the three price targets to the downside. So here is the 457 and then 467 and then the 471. So now I have the notes, I draw the price target. So I know that if it crosses the 457, I'll take it to the upside to 10 to 14 points approximately. But another thing that I do like to do is I like to see what the earnings are so that I could be more mentally prepared. So what I do is I go to the fly on the wall, I put an MDB and I see what were the earnings. So these are pretty much all of the news. So I can see that, um, you know, price target raised uh, to 290 from 245. Uh, Morgan Stanley raised it to 480 from 410, um, you know, 434 from 415, and so on and so on. And you can see all of the, you know, uh, price targets, and all of them were raised, and most of them were raised very significantly. I mean, City, this is what is almost 100 bucks, $75. Uh, Morgan Stanley was UBS, $150 increase. Uh, what was Morgan Stanley? Morgan Stanley was $70 increase. So, they were all raised and it was pretty significant. So I was making sure that my eyes are on the stock. And another thing you could do is, depending on how many points AJ says to long it, I mean, as you can see here, Tesla, it's four to seven points. That's a lot, but 10 to 14 points is a lot more than four to seven points. And then, you know, if we look at Roku, it was four to six points to the upside. DocQ was four to six, you know, four to six, blah, blah, blah. Um, even here it was four to six, two to four. Uh, MDB was the only stock that was 10 to 14. So that should really catch your attention to make sure that you're watching the stock. It doesn't mean you're going to have to, it doesn't mean you're going to play it 100%, but this means for you to keep an eye on it a little bit more than all the other stocks. And that's exactly what I did. I saw how many, you know, how many more points it could go to the upside. I saw that it was gapping up 53 points. I saw that all the um, price targets were raised significantly. My eyes are on the stock. And another thing is, if my eyes are on the stock, it does not mean that I will be trading it 100%. It just means that I will be watching it, not trading it. You're not obligated to trade it, just watching it. All right, so now that we got all of that out of the way, you know, pre-market, now it's on, your, it's on your charts. You have all the price targets drawn. Now, how did I play it? Now, something that I did notice, well, first of all, before even that, is the stock, as I said before, it is gapping up a lot, 53 points. That is significant, and that was in pre-market yesterday. Today, it wasn't really doing it, but this move at aftermarket yesterday was big, so we knew that it's going to be in play, so we're going to have to be watching after it. So now, something that I did notice is 
AJ's first price target was 457. He said if it crosses 457, then you could take a 10 to 14 points to the upside. Now, an issue that happened was it crossed the 457 at pre-market. And I trade options, so if you trade equity, I mean, you could have just purchased this at pre-market and then sold it at pre-market. But options are not tradable at aftermarket and pre-market only during the market. So I had to be patient. And usually when it does cross the price target um, before market opens, it means that it does want to run. But we just still have to be very patient. You know, once the market opens, you cannot enter it right away because, I mean, in this case, you could have made a lot of money because here on the left, these are actually the contracts I was in and they open up at around 95 cents. So you could have made a lot of money, but that's not always going to be the case because once the market opens, the spreads are very far apart. And if it didn't make this big of a move, you could have actually potentially lost money even if it did go to the 471. Now, a rule that I have, um, I actually teach everybody in this course, but I want to make sure everybody really gets it down is I have something called the two minute rule. This means that you cannot take any option trades the first two minutes of the open. So you have to wait at least, at least two minutes after the bell rings to take any option trades. Now, the reason I tell you this is first of all, when the market opens, the spreads on the options are extremely wide and you could get filled horribly and you do not want that to happen to you. The reason the spreads are so far is because the options weren't tradable after market and pre-market. So there's a long period of time where the options weren't trading. So once the market opens, the prices have to adjust according to how much the stock has moved. And MDB has moved 53 points, so the st options really have to adjust. And the second reason is because you want to see what the direction is of the stock. You don't want to enter it right away because just because the stock ran at pre-market doesn't mean that it's going to keep on running. As I said, I want to keep an eye on it. I never said that I want to take it right away. I just want to keep an eye on it. So I do want to be patient on it and I do want to see a direction. So once the market did open, again, I did not take it in these two green candles. Whoever did, I mean, you could have gotten lucky and yes, you could have made a lot of money. But this is not always the case. You know, you won't always make money on these types of plays. It's just in this case, you could have. And again, right now I'm talking only about options. If you're doing equity, yes, you could have bought it in the open and then sold it and made a lot of money. But in options, it is a little bit more riskier. Now, what was my mind of thought when I was looking at the stock? My mind of thought, my thought process was I, I see this huge move and then I see this green candle and I'm like thinking, yes, I did miss the move. But you do not want to enter right away because don't get in a trade just because you think you're missing a move. You have to be patient. And what I was waiting is I was waiting for a little pullback. And then once I see that the stock could go more to the upside, I will take it more to the upside. So here, what I did was I entered in this green candle here, because again, this was a pretty big pullback. You know, I saw pullback and at first I did think that it's going to go to the downside, but then once I saw the green candle and that it's going, you know, wants to push more, I decided to get 10 contracts um, and then actually this scale and I purchased five more contracts. So I had a total of 15 contracts and then I sold somewhere around here. But that was that's not the reason why I want to make the video right now. The reason I want to make the video right now is to show you what strike price I got and how I dealt with the spreads. So now looking at the strike prices right now, I mean, right now it's 1 p.m. Eastern time. So the market's been open for a couple hours. So the spreads did get a lot tighter. I mean, you know, these are pretty decently sp decent spreads. And, you know, these are red. Um, if you don't know what this is, I made a video about it. But if you didn't watch it, this is pretty much the uh, percentage of the spreads compared to the bid. So what percent the spreads are compared to the bid? I usually like to take the ones that are in yellow. So less than 10% of the bid. Um, <clears throat> so as you can see, these are in red. Um, if you're interested in this, it's a pretty much a custom script for Thinkorswim. If you're interested, I'll actually leave a link to that video in the description box below. So you can check it out. Um, you just copy and paste the script. But pretty much here, we can see that the spreads aren't too bad here. But I actually took screenshots during the trade, and I want to show you how bad the spreads were at the open. So what I did is I took a few screenshots during the market. Um, I wasn't able to take screenshots at the very open because I just I I, I thought of it. I'm gonna make the video right after. Like when I entered the trade. I saw the spreads were jumping around and I decided to make a video. So that's why I did take screenshots. So this screenshot is taken exactly at 935 and 42 seconds. Um, so around five minutes and 42 seconds after the market opened. 
Um, so as you can see, most of these, I took when I was in it, I took the 490 strike price. And I entered before this, but look at these spreads. These spreads are 20%, 30%. These are spreads you now want to be in. Because if you do market order, market order, so market buy, market sell, you're going to be down a lot when you buy, and then you're going to be losing a lot of profit when you sell. You might even be super red even if the stock went up, and these are the spreads. So this is at 9.35 and 42 seconds. Now, here's another screenshot, and this screenshot was taken at 9.35 and 59 seconds. So around, what was it? Around 15 seconds have passed by, a little bit more. So 15 seconds. And now the 490 strike price, was, which is the strike price that I was in, the spreads are now 5% of the bid. So before they were, before they were, here it is. Before they were 20%, and then 15 seconds later, they're 5%. And then this screenshot right here was taken only like as well, like 10 seconds later. And now we can see that these two strike prices have also tightened up their spreads. Um, so now the reason this happens is because when the stock is really moving a lot to the upside and downside, the spreads start to become a little bit wider because of the price change. So, you know, the buying orders and the selling orders become a little bit far apart, but then they get tightened up. So now the whole point of this is when you're doing market buy you ha and market sell, you have to be sure you're buying and selling when the spreads are tight. So for example, I was in the 490 strike price. So I wanna make sure when I buy or sell, the spreads are 6% or as here 5% and not 20%. And again, this is only both, all three of these screenshots are taken within the same, within a minute, if not even less. And these are how much the spreads are going apart. So you have to make sure you're not getting, you're not buying or selling when it's 20% because you're just gonna get filled horribly with market buy and market sell. You wanna make sure you're getting filled at around 5%. Now these are only a few screenshots. The spreads were going up and down and up and down, but you gotta make sure you're buying and selling when the spreads are tight. Uh, buying especially, selling, you just gotta sell you know, at pops. Even though the spreads do get a little bit wider, you still have to sell. You can't hold it because then if it dumps, it's gonna, the spreads are gonna be even more far apart. And then you're just going to be losing, either losing more money or you're going to be losing a lot more profit. So you got to make sure the spreads are tight for both, but especially when you're buying. So that's another reason why I like this spreads um, script is because you can visually see a lot easier rather than calculating the, you know, the, what the spreads are. You could easily visually see the percentage and then you could decide, you know, what strike price you want to take and when you want to take it, especially a stock like this, you know, where the spreads are jumping up so much, you got to make sure you're getting filled at a good time. And, you know, if you're asking me, well, Mark, why can't I do limit buy and limit sell? This stock was going fast. I mean, one candle, I mean, it went from 558 to 572, over 15 points. You're not going to get filled if you're doing limit orders. You're just going to be forcing, you know, you're going to be putting a limit order. You don't get filled and the stock goes up 10 points. Then you're going to be bumping up your limit order. Keep on bumping it up, bumping it up, bumping it up. You're just, first of all, you're going to be missing the move. Second of all, you're going to be chasing, and that is just not a good situation to be in. And as for the buying, if you're doing limit sell, you want to sell a certain price, then what if the price stock goes down a little bit? Then you're going to have to change the limit order to a lot less, and then it keeps on going down, 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 and then you're just going to be losing and losing and losing and losing money. That's not what you want to be doing. Stock like this, you got to do market buy, market sell, and you have to make sure that the spreads are super tight. Make sure you enter in when the spreads are tight. Now, another thing is for a stock like this, you have to sell on a pop. You cannot hold it. So pretty much I bought here and then I did sell on a pop on this candle. So I was not holding it because if you hold it, it's just not going to be good. And um, I, I also for expiration, this is the same day expiration, uh, but I'm buying and selling within, you know, minutes. That was like three minutes I was in the trade. So I'm not holding the stock. But the reason you don't want to hold is because this is the stock on the right and on the left are the contracts. Now, I know this is same day expiration, but look how much the stock, the contracts are going down compared to the stock itself. I mean, the stock is technically like, you know, it's going up a little bit, a little bit, but the contracts were just going down and down and down. That's why you don't want to hold, especially on a big move like this, because again, volatility. Now, one last thing before I go, uh, these contracts that are on the left, uh, which are the 490 strike price, which is the one I had. I don't want you traders to be looking at that. The, uh, the contracts opened up at $95 and then the highest was 1500. This is a 1500% increase, 1500% increase. That is a lot. And 
I don't want you to be thinking that you should have entered at the very bottom and then you should have exited at the very top and made 1,500% profit today. That is impossible, especially on the option side and on this trade. First of all, you didn't know that the stock is going to go up this much. Second of all, you shouldn't be entering at the very, very open with options because as I said, it's not safe because the option price has to adjust from the day before. You know, what if you purchased here a lot of contracts thinking that it's going to go, you're going to make 1,000 over 1,000% 1, profit. And then what if the stock just dumps on you and you lose all of that money that I don't want that. I don't want you to have that mentality. You have to buy and sell on pops. So whole, buying it at the very open and selling at the very top is impossible. I doubt it. I don't think not a single person in the world could have done that or would have done that or did do it. It is impossible. You have to wait. You have to be patient. You have to buy and sell on pops. You can't hold it, especially options. So I don't want you to have the mentality that you did miss all of this move. You know, I made around 50% 50 profit today, 50-60% profit, and I'm happy. I did not make 1,000 profit. I didn't even make 100% profit. I made 60% profit. That is fine. If you could have done the same thing, again, if you take everything I taught you for the future, and if a stock like this happens to, you know, be in play again, you will know how to trade. You got to make sure that the spreads are tight. Uh, you got to wait for that timing. So even if the spreads aren't tight when you're first looking at it, it could get tighter and you have to wait for that moment. Now, I'm not saying it will 100% get tighter. It might become tighter. So if the spreads did not become tighter and it was moving, I still wouldn't have taken it because, again, I do market buy and market sell and I just I would get filled horribly and I wouldn't want that. And it's just not worth to do limit buy and limit sell because it just causes chasing. So thank you so much for watching this video. I know it was a little lengthier video than usual, but I wanted to say as much information as I can. I wanted to, you know, for you to pick my brain. I pretty much talked about how I traded the stock from pre-market to after, you know, to during the when the market opened to how I traded it, what buy order, what sell order, expiration. I did same day expiration again because I am buying and selling within minutes. I am not planning on holding it. If you are planning on holding it for whatever reason, you should have gotten next week's expiration or the weeks after expiration. Don't get the same day expiration. Don't even get the same week expiration. Um, even if it's Tuesday, Thursday, because if you're holding it, it's better to get next week's expiration. So again, thank you so much for watching. Hopefully you really enjoyed this video. Hopefully you were able to get a lot out of it. Um, I did, I think I said everything that I did in this trade, everything, my thought process, everything that went through. Um, this is a little bit more advanced trade. So, you know, if you're a beginner, beginner, I don't recommend doing trades like this. Do something a little bit more simpler. This is for a little bit more advanced. But as, as I said, I said everything I... Uh, I said everything that all the tips and tricks that I did during this trade. So you have all of that. So again, one last time, thank you so much for watching. Subscribe, hit that like button. It does help me a lot. Um, you know, if you have any questions, you could put in the comment section below. Um, make sure you follow my Twitter. I post my daily option trades there every single day, profit or loss. I do everything. I'm fully transparent there. So make sure you follow it and check out my course. Link will be all links will be in the description. MosesTrades.com. Thank you so much for watching and I will catch you on the next video. Have a good one, everyone, and safe trading.